We want Eleven Labs to transform our text into a voice that's so lifelike it's almost impossible to tell that it's not a real person talking. But how do we get Eleven Labs to add the right emotion, emphasize the right word, or pause when we want it to? From captivating stories to crystal clear instructions, the right voice can bring your story to life. To get that though, we need to unlock the full potential of Eleven Labs text-to-speech capabilities. Welcome to the ultimate guide to mastering Eleven Labs text-to-speech. We're diving deep into the heart of Eleven Labs, demystifying those setting sliders, voice selection, and other settings. And we'll get into how to use prompting and some other tricks to get the best possible result from Eleven Labs. So if you're ready to transform your text into captivating audio, let's get started. Selecting the right voice matters. Think of this like working with a human actor. Imagine you want a fast-talking, punchy voice to promote your monster truck event. Even though Morgan Freeman has an awesome voice, fast and punchy isn't really his style. So if you hire him to do the voiceover, either it's not going to be fast-paced and punchy, or... He could probably pull it off, but that's not really in his voice's norm, so it's going to sound weird. The same thing applies when you're browsing voices in the Eleven Labs voice library, or you're creating one in the voice lab. You want to find a voice that matches the style of what your project is going to be. If the sample clip sounds really good reading a section from an audiobook, and an audiobook is the project you want to use it for, that's probably a good match. Now, which model do we use? We have Eleven Labs Multilingual V2. It has 29 languages. It's very stable, accurate. It's great with accents, and it has lots of language diversity. Now, keep in mind that it tries to recreate every aspect of the voice that it's trained on. So if you're cloning a voice, you want to keep this in mind. Background noises, electronic interference, and even sharp S's, the sibilance S's in the sample, those can end up being included in the output or just totally confuse the AI so it doesn't know what to do. Also, there have been some reports with multilingual V2 language switching, where the AI gets turned around mid-generation and starts generating in a different language. Now, Eleven Lab says this happens when the text is similar between two languages, but the pronunciations are different. They're working on this issue, but right now, it's just a known thing. Eleven multilingual V1. This model does nine languages. It's an experimental model, and it's not recommended for use. Eleven Multilingual V2 is more accurate, more natural, more stable, and has more languages. So this should never be your first pick for a model unless Eleven Labs gives you the little warning box and says you should switch to this one. But for the most part, don't use it. Eleven English V1, this is an English-only model, and this is the OG. This is the first Eleven Labs model. It has a very limited training data set. It's the smallest, but that also makes it the fastest. But it is also the least accurate model that they have. Probably want to avoid this one whenever possible. 11 Turbo V2. This is an English-only model. It's designed for fast generations, but to get that quick turnaround, this model does not have a style slider. Accuracy is good, but it may not be as good as Multilingual V2. That's too darn complicated. Which one of these is the all-around model that just works? Right. Generally, Multilingual V2 is going to be your best bet. Now, if Eleven Labs thinks you should be using a different model for whatever voice you've selected, it'll give you a little pop-up yellow thing above your selections there that says, hey, you should probably be using this model instead. That would be a good time to switch. But otherwise, you probably want to start with Eleven Multilingual V2. Now let's get into the settings, starting with the stability slider. All right, on this slider, lower will get you more emotional range, but this is also dependent on the original voice, so keep that in mind if you're cloning. It can only do so much with the voice that it was trained on. Now, if you set this too low, it might end up generating odd performances, being overly random, and speech that's just too fast. Setting this higher will generally get you a more stable voice, which avoids the odd random speech, and it's more likely to produce consistent voice in subsequent generations. So if you use it to generate now and you use it to generate again for another section of your project, the higher this is, the more likely it is that it's going to sound the same from one text-to-speech generation to another. But if you get this too high, you can end up with a really monotonous, plain voice that just has little emotion. So where's the best starting point for the stability slider? For stability, the best place to start is either at the default setting or somewhere between 40 to 50 as your starting point. 
and then try some moderate increases or decreases depending on what you're trying to make happen. If it's too monotone, dial it down a little bit. If it's too erratic, uh, take it up a little bit. Now the similarity slider, and this one determines how close the AI should stick to the original voice when it's generating the speech. Lower is generally gonna sound less like the original voice, but if you go too low, it can be very different from the original voice and really not sound much like it at all. On the other hand, higher is gonna make it sound more like what was originally uploaded and the sample voice. But if you go too high, it's more likely to include artifacts and background noise. If the original recording had any of those, if it was recorded in poor quality or just had some of that excess noise that wasn't noticed when it was recorded. Also, keep this in mind when you're creating your voice clone. This is why you, you want a really clean recording and you don't want any of that background noise. Is the default setting the best starting point for the similarity slider? Yeah, 75 to 80 is a good setting. That's probably going to be a good final setting, but it, it definitely is at least a good starting point. Most folks find that between 75 and 80 is a good spot to be in. Style exaggeration. Style exaggeration attempts to emphasize the style of the original voice. Setting it to zero turns style exaggeration off completely. Moving the setting higher will exaggerate the style of the original voice. However, it may come at a cost of decreasing stability. Now, Eleven Labs recommends keeping this slider at zero for the most part. But sometimes, especially with my clone voice, I find that turning this up a little bit helps get the voice I'm looking for. Speaker boost is a checkbox, not a slider, and it increases the similarity of the output to the original recording. Generally, the difference here is going to be pretty subtle, but it might be just enough to take a voice from good to great. Now, having speaker boost turned on will slow down the generation process a little bit, so keep that in mind. And speaker boost is only available in the newer models like Multilingual V2. An important note here, settings are non-deterministic. That means that each time you generate, you will get something different. It'll sound a different way. It might have a different style. So you can't just say, well, I have my similarity at this and I had my stability at this and, and I write down those settings and then I'll always get that exact same voice. It doesn't work that way. Choosing a higher setting on the stability slider is most likely to help you with that. Many users find the sweet spot to be 40 to 50 for stability and setting the similarity around 75 to 80 and then just keep regenerating until you get exactly what you want. And try the speaker boost if the generations don't have enough of the original voice style and you're okay with it taking a little bit longer. Just keep generating? Seriously? Okay, it might sound weird to just keep clicking the generate button until you get a take that you like, but let's go back to thinking about it like you're working with a human actor. You found an actor whose voice you like and you think will be right for the project. You hand him the script and start recording. He reads the line, but it didn't quite come out the way you wanted. So you have him read it again and again and again until you're like, that's it, perfect. And then you're on to the next line. Instead of saying, try again, you're just clicking the generate button. Like a human actor, the AI is looking at the context to figure out how the line should be read. Except a human actor hopefully has read the entire script and knows how that line is supposed to fit in the big picture. The AI can only infer the context from the line or paragraph or whatever you give it. All right, that's the settings. Now let's talk about prompting. In addition to those sliders and, and the checkbox, you can also nudge the AI to sound the way you want it to through prompting. Hold on there, fella. There ain't no prompt box in Eleven Labs. Where are you going to put a prompt? You're absolutely right, but the text you're typing in to be converted to speech is actually part of a prompt. You just don't see the rest of the prompt parts. We can put some instructions right there within the text we're converting to speech. Adding a pause. One way we can add a pause is with programmatic syntax. For example, if you want the speaker to pause between words or sentences, the AI might figure it out by looking at the context. And if you regenerate enough times, eventually there's a good chance it is going to figure out where the pause is supposed to go. But if it doesn't, or it doesn't give a pause that's long enough for your liking, you can add the programmatic syntax within a less than and greater than brackets, break time equals quote 1.5s end quote forward slash, and then of course the greater than sign, to force a 1.5 second pause exactly where you want it. Now, the cool thing about this is that it doesn't just add a silence like you get if you just added a split in a timeline editor and put a space in. In human speech, when we pause, the words before the pause and after the pause are spoken differently 
than they would be if there wasn't a pause. The AI understands this and it uses the pause as part of the context to style the speech of the words before and after it. Now, since the AI has the liberty to adjust based on the pause, you might not like the way it says the words before or after the pause. Back to our human actor scenario. The line is, I don't like tomatoes. I love tomatoes. How many different ways could an actor read that line? I don't like tomatoes. I love tomatoes. I don't like tomatoes. I love tomatoes. I don't like tomatoes. I love tomatoes. And a million more. The AI, like an actor, might not spit out what you had in mind. You can generate until you get something you like and regenerate and regenerate. Pauses using this break time syntax are added in seconds. So the 1.5 is 1.5 seconds. If you want one second, I'd put 1.0. If you want 0.7 seconds, I'd put 0.7. They can be up to three seconds long, but 11 Labs recommends that you not use too many of these programmatic syntax pauses in one submission or bad things can happen. Now keep in mind if there were uhs or ums in the original voice recording that was submitted, the AI might include those in some of these long pauses, which is okay, that just makes it sound more natural. Now you can use break time syntax in the speech synthesis, which is the main tab we create voices in, and in the appy, but it's not available in projects yet. The break time syntax is what 11 Labs recommends for pauses, but you can also try using a dash, an M dash, which is one of those really long dashes, or multiple dashes for a longer pause. For example, it dash is dash over. Uh, you can also use an ellipse three dots like this. I, yeah, I guess so. And a lot of times using the ellipses will also add some hesitation or nervousness to the style of the speech. That might be perfect for what you're doing or it might not fit at all. These won't always work because they aren't programmatic and they rely on the AI to interpret them and what you want. But sometimes adding a dash or a couple of dots gets you really quickly to the result you're looking for without regenerating a bunch of times. Pronunciation. One option here is programmatic syntax again. 11 English V1 and 11 Turbo V2 support the speech synthesis markup language, SSML, phoneme tag with pronunciations defined using International Phonetic Alphabet IPA and the CMU ARPABET. An example of specifying the punctuation of the word actually using IPA might look like this. And an example of specifying the pronunciation of the word actually using CMU might look like this. Nobody knows what you're talking about. Isn't there a better way? There is another way, and we're almost there. But I think folks should know that this exists, and hey, there might be a few people out there that know how to take this and run with it, so let me finish up this part. If you're using SSML, it's pretty important to specify which syllable gets the stress or it might end up being pronounced incorrectly. For example, this tag for speaking the word talon specifies that the stress is placed on the AE and no stress on the AH, if you understand what that means. I don't. I can kind of figure it out, but this is not natural to me at all. Using SSML for pronunciation is a single word thing. It's one word at a time. So if you're in text, include someone's first and last name, and you want them pronounced a certain way, you've got to create one tag for the first name and one tag for the last name. You'd also have to know what all those funky codes are. Who has time to learn all that? You're probably right. Another way to get the AI to pronounce something the way you want is to use the phonetic spelling of a word. And the best part of this is you don't have to use the real phonetic spelling like you'd see in the dictionary. Just imagine you're telling a friend how to pronounce a word and what it sounds like. For example, for the word samurai, you might try samurai or samurai or samurai or any one of these. Or the name Kerchevsky, you might try Kerchevsky or Kerchevsky. Really, it's kind of fun to play with these and come up with the different ways things could be pronounced. And of course, you can just keep regenerating and it might get it right. I have absolutely on regeneration had 11 labs pronounce something differently than it did on a previous generation. Emotion. The AI is going to infer emotion from the context, or at least it's going to try. You can help it by writing the text you want converted to speech in the way it would be written in a book. For example, are you sure about that? He said confused or don't test me. He shouted angrily. 
flip through some books, preferably fiction, that's where you're going to find more of these emotional quotes, and see what words and phrases are added to the quotes and how they're written to get some ideas. I don't read books, especially fiction. Oh, okay. Well, you can always tell ChatGPT what you're trying to do and have it spit out the text to use. The catch to using this method is that those directional cues are going to be included in the output. So you're going to have to take the audio file into an audio or video editor and trim out all those cues like the he shouted angrily or the he said confused. Now, like I said, Eleven Labs AI is going to try and infer the emotion from the context. So you absolutely might want to try several generations without adding anything like this and see if you get what you want. And then you'll avoid the trouble of having to trim out these directional cues. And there's some other tips here too. Rather than adding these extra words, you might want to check the punctuation. Put commas where you want pauses, periods where you want the end of a statement, exclamation marks where you want it to read like an exclamatory statement, and question marks after questions. When I have a question that I want it to read with a lot of tension, I guess like a rhetorical question, maybe like, are you kidding me? I've had good luck adding an exclamation point followed by a question mark. Some people have done question mark, exclamation, question mark, and gotten good results that way. Also, when I have a word that I want to emphasize, if I type that word in all caps, it seems to work pretty well. Maybe not every time, maybe not exactly the way I want. I've also seen people use all caps for an entire sentence or phrase and get pretty good results with that if they want a shouted phrase rather than saying the sentence comma he shouted they'll just put the whole sentence in, ex in all capitals and it sort of understands to shout sometimes not all the time not a hundred percent in using the book style some folks have found that the more descriptive they are the better off things work out for instance rather than saying he whispered blah 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 they'll say in a room so quiet you could hear a pin drop he softly whispered and that seems to get the AI to conceive what it's supposed to be doing. Pacing. These Eleven Labs voices, they talk way too fast, especially if you do that voice clone deal. We hear that a lot, but it doesn't have to be that way. Eleven Labs thinks the issue, especially when it comes to voice cloning, is more likely to happen when you submit multiple sample clips when you're creating your voice clone. The AI takes all the samples you submit and stitches them together into one so everywhere there's a stitch, the end of one sample file to the beginning of the next sample, there's no pause or space. When the AI learns the voice in the sample, it tries to emulate the speech pattern and creates an oddly fast style. Because it sees every one of those as words from two different sentences or two different messages slammed right up against each other with no spacing. To prevent this, Eleven Labs suggest submitting one sample file that has all the natural pauses and would eliminate any of those accidental no pause segments. Now this doesn't mean you have to use a one take recording for your sample. You can record multiple sample files or take multiple sample files you've already recorded, bring them into one file in a video or audio editor, and just make sure you leave some gaps between those clips. Descript is the perfect tool for this because you can just edit the clips when you bring them in and you put gaps between them. Descript will automatically use room tone for the gaps so that it sounds consistent with everything else in the sample. So there won't be weird changes in the background environment that Eleven Labs has to sort of average out. So that's great if you're cloning a voice and you want to make sure that you have good pacing. But what if you want to use a voice that already exists? Well, one thing you can do is use that write it like a book technique that we talked about for emotions. So it might look like this. I wish that was true. I really do. But it's not, he said slowly. Of course, you'll have to trim out the he said slowly using a video or audio editor. You certainly can attempt with regenerate a couple times to see if you get the pacing that you want. Now, you might find it helpful to use some of these tips in combination with the sliders. For instance, if you're trying to use some of the prompting to get a different style out of the speaker, you might think about lowering that similarity slider so that the AI isn't trying to stay hard and fast on that speaker's voice and it'd be a little more flexible and perhaps open to accept your direction that you slipped in there. 
What tips and tricks do you have? Share them in the comments so that we can all benefit from them, if you don't mind. With these tips and tricks in your pocket, and the ones I'm sure you're going to find in the comments, hopefully you can go create voices in 11 Labs that work the way you want them to. What if somebody doesn't have 11 Labs yet? Good point. There's a link in the description so you can go get 11 Labs. It's simple and easy, and there's a free tier available so you can play with all these tips and tricks and see how they work for you.